I'm a young guy, still in college, University of Akron, not far from you. And I found out that uh, I could fish year-round in a boat if I went a little bit northeast from where you live and I lived up to the Niagara River that flows into Lake Ontario. Phenomenal, phenomenal winter trout fishery. My little Lund 18-foot boat was perfect for it. Uh, I could either work at a minimum wage job all week during school and make 30 bucks a week or go to the lake and guide for two days and make 400 bucks for the weekend. So I made good friends with one of the more, uh, what would you call it, no-tell, motel type places in Niagara Falls that had zero business in the winter. You know, and they gave me a how did we not talk about the crappy place? We talked about the back of the truck. How did we not talk about some? We could do a whole podcast just on the shittiest places we've stayed. Exactly. <laughs> so I go up to New York, fished all winter. It's starting to get close to springtime, probably mid-March. Um, and as you know, Lake Erie starts to break up on a normal year. The ice starts to break up in that first early part of March to the middle of March. And it flows over Niagara Falls into the river and then melts or goes out into Lake Ontario to melt or wherever it goes. Well, I launch my boat in the river and we're fishing and we're catching some fish and we're having a good day. And no one told me, and I didn't ask, so it was my own fault, that they were going to raise what they call the ice boom in the lower. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going there. Oh, God, I don't even know this one. Yeah, the, the old ice boom. Yeah. So they have a boom that they put across the river to hold those ice chunks back until it makes sense to let all the ice down the river at one time. Well, they lifted that boom, and uh, I look up, and if you think the movie Titanic had a lot of icebergs in it, you ain't seen nothing. Uh, literally a wall of ice about 10 feet tall coming downstream at about 7 or 8 miles an hour because that's what the current is there, and you can't get through it. So I had no choice but to drive 11 miles to the mouth of the river, and I think it's about 12 miles to Alcott, New York, down the shore of Lake Ontario, pull into a marina, get a taxi cab, go back and get my truck and trailer, and drive back to Alcott to pick up my guide clients and my boat. Needless to say, I did not get a tip that day. <laughs> they, they weren't overly impressed with their captain's skills on the water that day. Uh, it makes a neat story. I learned my lesson. Uh, the middle of March, when I go to that river, I always make sure that the ice boom's not coming up that day. But uh, it was not a, That's incredible. a fun. Yeah, it was. It could have ended very badly, actually. Oh, uh, oh absolutely. That ice, that ice would take anything out that's in its way. Well, it's, it's, it's like razor blades. It's like dynamite yeah. and razor blades. If we wouldn't have been ahead of it, it could have got really, really so, bad. So. So on, on this ice boom, because I, I know what the ice booms are, but do they, how do they mark? Because I've never had, a, I've never guided or fished there during that time. What do they do to know? Is there like a, a flashing light or is there just they known that it's this uh, day? I, I guess that they publish it in the uh, local newspapers up there and they put it on the local radio stations. I don't know if they do anything different now because the internet wasn't a thing then. Uh, and I haven't guided there since the internet has been a big deal. So I imagine now it's on the internet somewhere. They probably have a website that if you're on the river often, you know to go check to make sure that they're not going to raise these ice booms. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty hairy experience. I should have known when we were the only boat on the river that day that something was up. <laughs> 